calling the nine o'clock joint hearing on judiciary and on HHS, uh, Health Human Services Committee and Judiciary for hearing today. For those who are streaming, who are streaming live, um, excuse me, thank you. Present with me is Chair Rhodes, as well as member um, Senator Elefante. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties, the committee will be reconvened to discuss any outstanding business. Those who are on Zoom, your audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it's your turn to testify. Each testifier will have one minute to testify. We have 50 registered testifiers. I run a strict clock, so I am going to cut you off. I'm sorry, but we need to move on because we have session at 11 and we do have to cut it off, unlike some other hearings. Um, you, for those on Zoom, your audio will be muted, video disabled. I already said that if there's a technical glitch during your time to testify, we may have to move on to the next person due to time constraints. I will be reading a list of individuals who submitted written testimony for each measure. We apologize if the closed captioning does not accurately transcribe the names. If you're interested in reviewing the written testimony, please go to the legislator's website. You'll find a link on the status page for the measure. We appreciate your understanding and remind you to use your time to either add additional comments or you can stand on your written testimony. Like I said, we have a strict one minute, but because the authors um, of this bill are present, we are gonna call them out of order. We are also only gonna give them one minute. Questions are gonna go thereafter um, for those authors. After that, everything will be the same as it was. So first up, for SB 335, SD1, Relaying can Cannabis, Attorney General. Good morning, Chairs, Senator. I am Special Assistant to the Attorney General Dave Day, and with me is Deputy Attorney General Andrew Goff. The Department of the Attorney General offers the following comments. The Attorney General, as the Chief Legal Officer and Chief Law Enforcement Officer of the Hawaii, under the Hawaii Constitution, cannot support the legalization of cannabis as a policy measure. As the Attorney for the Legislature, our duty is to advise the Legislature of legal risk. Attorney General Lopez has made clear that issues of federal illegality, the growth of the illicit market, driving while high, and problems with protecting children, among others, are serious concerns that the legislature must consider. No effort to legalize cannabis, however, well, however carefully planned and well-intentioned, will be without problems and serious risks. That being said, if the legislature chooses to legalize adult use cannabis, the bill must be balanced, moderate, and make protecting public safety and public health to the extent possible its highest priorities. SB 3335 represents a good faith effort toward protecting the public welfare and is an improvement on previous bills that have been heard by the legislature. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Questions? Okay, I do have one. So there's a number of opposition, mostly for, a lot from hemp farmers, not only that, and also the law enforcement community, which I see um, prosecutor Steve um, also being present. But let's talk about the hemp farmers. Their main concern is that adding them in into this cannabis authority will somehow diminish their current activity. What's your response to that? Uh, thank you, Senator. Andrew Goff, Deputy Attorney General. I'll field that one. I do want to mention we did do an info briefing on this topic, too, for the senators, yes. if you want to uh, double check that. But move, just your, briefly, move your mic closer <clears throat> to you. Just briefly, uh, our position is essentially that it's uh, it's important to have one agency tasked with doing all uh, regulation of cannabinoids. Uh, they're all the same product. And currently hemp is regulated by multiple agencies, which creates gaps in regulations and makes enforcement very difficult. And also, I think it's really important to mention that this bill would fully fund hemp enforcement, which is currently not funded. And there is not a lot of hemp enforcement going on. OK, thank you very much. Okay, I'm sure that um, I see also Senator Aquino being present. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, so, I mean, I understand what you're saying. There's no no policy is completely without downsides. Um, 
but it's also true that something like 24 states already have legalized uh, recreational apocololo for uh, adults. They've managed to cope somehow. Uh, I mean, won't we be able to manage to cope somehow too? I, I think that it probably means what you manage, mean by cope. I think that in certain in certain ways, so we absolutely agree that the absolute national trend is towards legalization, 24 states in approximately 20 years. That includes Ohio, which recently had a referendum. That's a, that's a state that's pretty unique in a lot of ways, um, which passed it by almost a margin of 58 to 42 percent. Um, recent polling in Hawaii has suggested that there's um, broad support across the islands with respect to legalization. And that very fact is one of the reasons why the attorney general chose in her capacity as the chief legal officer of the state and the lawyers for the attorneys uh, to take on this bill um, and to um, basically craft something from scratch that would have in its framework something unique, take the best parts of what we believe were in the other states in terms of the law um, and present that to you as one possible option to consider. Um, I don't believe that any state has ever, um, and I think it's, I don't I think it's not even disputed um, that there's no state that's ever come out completely unscathed from this process. I think it just matters what's the tolerance of risk for um, the legislature in doing this, um, knowing that there are risks. Okay. And of course, there are risks to not doing anything either. So, okay. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Any other questions, members? No, I, I have a couple more. Um, Hawaii was the first state to legalize medical marijuana. Okay. And I'm looking at all of these testimonies, mostly from law enforcement, saying that if we pass this, that there will be this substantial increase in, in crime, in fentanyl. And we were already the first state. Have you seen in your studies, or are you able to, a difference in the crime of the ones that they're talking about, the violent crime, in the areas where there was home grow. Um, I will before say before and after the legalization of marijuana, in, le in, medical marijuana in the state of Hawaii. In Hawaii, you mean? Yes. Um, I can't really speak to that. We don't have the crime statistics on that specific issue. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, any Thank other you. questions, members? Okay, stick around. I'm sure after the other testimony, there will be more. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Office of Public Defender and Support. Good morning, committee members. I'm Johnny Kanaga, Public Defender. Um, the Office of the Public Defender supports Senate Bill Number 335. Um, legalization of cannabis and manufactured cannabis products will not create or normalize the commercial marijuana market, nor will legalization drive consumer demand. The marijuana market already exists. This market, however, remains underground, and those involved in it largely remain unaccountable. Unregulated sellers do not pay taxes, they do not check identification to ensure that buyers are 21 years or older, and they do not test the purity of their products. Moreover, any disputes that arise in the illicit marketplace are not adjudicated in the courts of law. By contrast, legalization and regulation will allow the state of Hawaii to establish legal parameters regarding when, where, and how the cannabis market may operate similar to the rules and regulations established in the medical marijuana industry. <clears throat> Authorities will actually know who is selling marijuana, where it is being sold, when and to whom. Cannabis will be produced um, and sold by legitimate taxpaying businesses mm -hmm. instead of drug cartels and criminals. These businesses will be required to test their products here to strict labeling and packaging requirements that ensure cannabis is identifiable and consumers know- I'm sorry. Ready. Sorry, your, your time's up. Thank I you. said I was gonna do it. Yes. Sick time. I didn't see the, t the timer there. So next up. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Hawaii Department of Agriculture and Support. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members, Dexter Kishida representing the Department of Agriculture. We stand in strong support of SD1 and would like to add that we also stand committed to our hemp farmers. And so we do, uh, our, our plan is to change some of our programming to helping the economic development and ensuring we can help them navigate the new and changing world that is happening. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Ne Next up, Department of Education providing comments, Superintendent Hayashi. 
Hello, Chair, Chairs, uh, Vice Chair, Senator. Keith Ayashi, Superintendent, testifying on behalf of the Department of Education. The Department stands on its written testimony providing comments on this measure. The Department has strong concerns regarding the negative impacts on youth that could result from the legalization of recreational cannabis for adults 21 and over. We believe there could be unintended costs associated with this action as a result of increased accessibility and acceptance of cannabis use. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Next, Department of Law Enforcement providing comments. Good morning, Chair, Vice Chairs, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Jordan Lowe. I'm the Director for the Department of Law Enforcement. I stand on my uh, testimony of uh, serious concern regarding this bill. I would like to bring up a uh, unintended consequence of this bill if it was to pass, and that would be violations of the uh, Federal Gun Control Act of 1968 as amended, because uh, under Title 18, 922 G3, it's unlawful for a user of controlled substance to possess firearms or ammunition. And right now, uh, under federal law, uh, cannabis is uh, still illegal. And I'm available for questions. Thank you very much. Next, we have um, Department of Taxation providing comments. Good morning, Chairs, Vice Chair, uh, Senator. Gary Suganuma, uh, Director of Taxation. The department stands on its written testimony offering comments. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up we have um, Department of Budget and Finance providing comments. Next we have Department of Commerce Consumer Affairs providing comments. Next we have Department of Health providing comments. Good morning, Chairs. I'm Lola Urban, representing um, Dr. Kenny Fink for the Department of Health, and I have with me my colleague, Michelle Nakata, who administers the Office of Medical Cannabis Control and Regulation. And uh, the Department of Health offers comments, and um, we provided 119 references um, and a detailed um, testimony. Um, we find that from a Department of Health perspective and our responsibility over the health and lives of people in Hawaii and pursuing as a goal advancing health equity, that legalizing adult use of cannabis should be expected to have a negative impact on the health of the public. And so you'll find in our testimony then just several major items that we're concerned about. And one of them would be um, our keiki and um, knowing that normalization of cannabis is already happening and that our keiki are using it in their vapes and um, that the brain continues to develop and we are concerned about um, the most vulnerable in our population as we try to advance health equity. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, I have a note here, DCCA was present. Are you still there? No? Okay. Come on up, um, Director Ando. I'm sorry, I was sitting in the back and I didn't raise my hand, but um, Sorry. good morning, chairs, members of the committee. Um, DCCA stands on its written testimony and is available for any questions. Please identify yourself. Oh, sorry. Maybe not. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next we have um, Steve Baum, Honolulu Prosecuting att Attorney in the opposition. Good morning, chairs, vice chair, member of the committee. I'm Steve Alm, uh, standing in strong opposition to this. Uh, our visitor industry says the Japanese tourists will stop coming. We look at other states like uh, Colorado who've had 10 years who've looked at this. You are gonna have more car crashes. You've got environmental problems. The, tea, the weed today is so much stronger. It was 3% back in the day. Now it's 20, 30, 40%. We've got kids going to the emergency room thinking they're going crazy because it's so much more powerful. And no matter what type of structure you set up, you will be legalizing a powerful drug and it will have a lot of bad consequences. And finally, if we legalize marijuana, as the folks in Colorado tell us, where there are more marijuana stores than Starbucks and McDonald's combined, you will change the character of your state forever. So let's not do that. Let's let's keep Hawaii Hawaii. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Doug. I mean, Prosecutor Ong. 
Next, we have Hawaii Paroling Authority in opposition. Sure, we stand on our written testimony in opposition to questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Police Department in opposition. Okay, um, I'm going to read those who registered to testify, which are huge because there's a number of people who have provided written testimony. Hawaii Police Department in opposition. Good morning, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committee. I'm Todd Raybuck, Kauai County Police Chief. I've submitted written testimony, so I'll keep this brief. In my prior law enforcement career in Las Vegas, I saw firsthand how the unintended consequences of the attempt to commercialize a regulated marijuana market has serious consequences on our communities. Last night, I had the privilege to attend the 40th anniversary of Mad Hawaii with the governor and several of your colleagues. During that evening, I heard gut-wrenching testimonies of family members who've lost persons uh, due to the hands of intoxicated and impaired drivers. A recent study found marijuana-related traffic deaths increased in at least seven states uh, that created a commercialized marijuana markets by at least 10% and some up to 22%. Passage of Senate Bill 3335 will create a commercial marijuana industry that will expand marijuana use, increase criminal activity, and make our roadways more dangerous. It's for these reasons that the Kauai Police Department stands in strong opposition of Senate Bill 3335. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Next, we have Honolulu Police Department, Captain Lambert in opposition. <coughs> Good morning, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Mike Lambert, Honolulu Police Department, Narcotics Vice Division. We stand in strong opposition. Um, I know that you guys are going to hear the same thing over and over again, but we need to represent for the people in this room that will be impacted in the future. The biggest, for me anyway, would be the youth. Um, we have unprecedented amounts of mental health issues on the heels of COVID. And to add on another, I guess, attraction for our youth, I don't think is the time. Um, until we tackle homelessness, until we tackle the addiction issues we have, this is not something that should be on the table. We already have medical marijuana, and the way that it looks now is that if you were to smoke marijuana at, let's say, Sand Island or wherever, or Magic Island, it's just the same as drinking a beer. So I already feel like it's pretty low on the totem pole, and making it commercial is just would just have adverse impacts to our community. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have um, Hawaii Cannabis Industry Association in support. Hi, Chang. Good morning, chairs, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Tai Chang, chairman of the Hawaii Cannabis Industry Association. We stand in support of SB 335. Uh, we submitted written comments and we stand by those. I'm available for questions. I just wanted to raise a couple issues uh, from my testimony first. Uh, we do provide some recommendations on the approach, uh, 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 the uh, approachment, uh, the amount that's being told from general funds to supply the program. We do provide uh, an opportunity to look at uh, accelerating sales within 12 months and using the excise tax and GET to help support uh, the standing up of the new authority as well as the grant programs that are contemplated. We have provided data to show that in October of last year, 84% of Hawaiian residents support the legalization of cannabis in some form. And we also have some financial data and modeling to show that if we were to start, uh, sales could reach uh, 35 million in tax revenue in the first two years Thanks, and up I to can. 80 million. Thank you. Up. Okay, next, Green Aloha LTD in support. Casey Rothstein. I'm Casey Rothstein, CEO of Green Aloha. We are the Kauai Medical Marijuana License. Uh, thank you, chairs and, and members for the opportunity today. Uh, we submitted written testimony, uh, standby written testimony, have some comments. Um, to echo what, what uh, Tai Chang said there, uh, we also do not see the need for such a huge cost to set up this program. Other states, much larger states, have been able to set up programs for significantly less money. Uh, and been able to do it in a shorter time period than the 18 months this bill lays out. Uh, we think Hawaii is certainly capable of achieving that as well. Um, I would also like to just comment that there is already on Kauai a thriving adult use 
marijuana market. And it is just completely in the hands of the illicit market. And they don't ID, they don't test, and they don't care who they sell it to. And often they're selling other drugs too. And when you take it out of Thank their you, hands Casey. and put it in stores, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have Chamber of Sustainable Commerce. Are you there on Zoom? Unfortunately, they're unavailable on Zoom chair. Okay, we may go, if we have time, we may go back to them at the very end. Big Island Growing Dispensaries, Jacqueline Moore in support. Good morning, chairs. Thank you so much, members of the Joint Committees. My name is Jacqueline Moore, co-founder, CEO of Big Island Grown Dispensaries. We stand in very strong support of the SD1 version of SB3335. Just to uh, highlight some of the testimony, uh, we do believe that the committee should seriously consider amendments made by HICIA relating to reduction of upfront costs, also relating to eliminating of unnecessary spender, spending, as well as staggering spending according to revenue projections uh, year one, year two. Please make it light enough so that we can actually implement this. I also just want to say the responsible thing to do from a legislative standpoint to protect the community, to protect the kids, knowing the reality of what's going on is to regulate and double down on legal infrastructure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next we have, excuse me, Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Tom Yamachika on Zoom. Are you present? They were here earlier, but it seems they left the room. Okay, we may, if we have time, we'll get back to them providing comments. Clifton Otto, Akamai Cannabis Consulting, providing comments on Zoom. Please proceed. Good morning, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committee, Dr. Clifton Otto. I'd like to add a few brief remarks to my written testimony providing comments. First, I'd like to highlight the recent scheduling recommendation from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. They determined after rigorous scientific and medical review that cannabis should be placed in federal schedule three based on the experience of medical use states and, and based on the abuse potential of cannabis. It seems unusual to listen to the recommendations of HHS during the COVID pandemic on the one hand, but ignore the recommendations regarding cannabis on the other. In addition, we cannot have a program that is consistent with public health and safety if people and businesses must violate federal law to participate. Program based on non-enforcement of federal law is unsustainable. My written testimony is based on waiting for Congress to remove cannabis from the Federal Controlled Substances Act entirely before moving ahead with adult use in Hawaii and in the meantime, fixing and expanding our medical program that meets the needs of our patients. Thank you, and I'll try to be available for questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, Doctors for Drug Policy Forum Reform, providing comments. Dr. Adenoff, are you on Zoom? I am. Okay, please proceed. Um, can I get a camera? Turn on your um, video. Okay, okay, you have one minute. Um, my name is Brian Adnoff. Uh, I'm president of Doctors for Drug Policy Reform, D4DPR, a group of several hundred physicians, other medical professionals, and scientists advocating for evidence-based drug policies and best practices that advance health. Our organization opposes the present bill unless amended. I would add I'm from Denver, Colorado. There are two uh, adult use dispensaries around the block, and it's fine. We assert that the most the significant problem of cannabis lies in the severe consequences of arrests and imprisonment, profoundly impacting individual and societal well-being. Unfortunately, aspects of SD1 undermine the potential benefits of cannabis legalization. Despite appearing to support legalization, the Attorney General's office seems intent on maintaining or expanding the law, role of law enforcement in criminalizing cannabis. Details of these concerns are provided in my written testimony. We implore that due consideration be given to the input provided by D4DPR in our written testimony and other members of the Hawaii Alliance for Cannabis Reform. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have um, Cynthia Ao, American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, providing comments. Good morning, chairs, vice chairs, and committee members. Cynthia Ao, Government Relations Director for Hawaii and Guam with American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network, or ACS CAN. Thank you for the opportunity to comment on SB3335, proposed SD1. ACS CAN remains concerned about reducing smoking, including the use of e-cigarettes and reducing 
exposure to secondhand smoke. ACS can opposes the changes to the e-liquid definition to exempt cannabis, cannabis products, or cannabis accessories. This creates a major loophole for companies to mix cannabis with tobacco or nicotine to avoid tobacco control laws. Recent history from our tobacco control work has shown how creating different terms and definitions is a strategic move by big tobacco to ensure certain products are regulated or taxed differently or escape regulation and taxation altogether. ACS can request clarification that smoking, including the use of e-cigarettes, of any and all cannabis or cannabis-derived products, whether natural or synthetic, is prohibited in all workplace and public places. This includes prohibiting indoor smoking associated with permits. Thank you very much. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have ACLU of Hawaii. I see Carrie Ann Shiroda there providing comments. Aloha, chairs and committee members. Carrie Ann Chirota on behalf of the ACL of Hawaii. We strongly support cannabis legalization. We offer comments rather than full support, as the proposed measure alarmingly ramps up law enforcement and creates a strict liability standard that will further criminalize and incarcerate people, including our youth. This measure also lacks robust social equity and expungement to address decades of harm resulting from cannabis prohibition. But on the larger question why we should promote and pass cannabis legalization, because it is wrong for the government to intrude upon personal behavior. A government that cannot make it a crime for an individual to drink a cocktail should, for the same reasons, not be permitted to make it a crime to use cannabis. The right to individual or bodily autonomy in matters of religion, reproductive decisions, including the right to the portion pill and other private consensual activities is at risk so long as the state thinks that it can legitimately punish people for choosing cannabis over a cocktail. It also infringes upon the explicit right to privacy enshrined in our Hawaii Thank Constitution. You, okay, next we have Thank you. Josh Frost, a ACLU, providing comments. Josh, present. Okay, moving on. ACUL, Stephanie Sakamoto, providing comments. Thank you very much. Next, we have Democratic Party. Well, um, they didn't register. Hawaii Appleseed, Will White, providing comments. Morning, Chairs, members of the committee. Um, I'm Will White, I'm the Deputy Director of Hawaii Appleseed. Uh, the legalization of an adult use market is a significant economic growth opportunity for the state. Um, we've seen other states that have legalized have generated significant increases in tax revenue when they've legalized it and regulated it successfully. Um, however, as written, the bill does not currently dedicate any funding to the general fund of that tax revenue. And in our view, this is a missed opportunity for the state to be able to capture that revenue to reinvest into critical services like education, infrastructure, and economic supports for working families. Um, we applaud the inclusion of a robust social equity licensing program, and we urge the legislature to dedicate 60% of the funds to the social equity program, and then also to consider dedicating a significant portion of those remaining funds into our general fund so that we can uh, fund critical state services for the people of Hawaii. So thank you very much for your for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Next, we have Hawaii Public Health Institute providing comments. Peggy Mirzwa, present. Okay. Next, we have Last Prisoner Project providing comments. Are you, please proceed. You have one minute. Yes. Good morning, chairs and committee members. My name is Frank Stiefel, and I'm testifying on behalf of the Last Prisoner Project, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit focused on cannabis related criminal justice reform. The inclusion of criminal justice policies has become commonplace for states that have sought to legalize adult use cannabis. Since 2018, 13 of 14 states that have legalized cannabis have included expungement policies. And since 2021, they have all been state-initiated state expungement processes. We understand that proposing any state-initiated expungement process represents no small undertaking and requires a reasonable amount of time to develop the necessary infrastructure. Based on our conversations with various agencies in Hawaii, we have developed and submitted for the consideration of this committee proposed legislative language that improves the expungement process for those who have been criminalized during prohibition. I thank you for your time and I'll stick around for any questions. Thank you very much. Next, we have Marijuana Policy Project providing comments. I see Karen O'Keefe, please proceed, you have one minute. 
I'm Karen O'Keefe, Director of State Policies at the Marijuana Policy Project. We strongly support legalization, but a key goal of legalization is to stop ruining lives over cannabis. Unfortunately, SD1 is laden with new penalties and a strict compliance standard that imposes jail time for technical issues. Legalization should mean fewer arrests and fewer lives derailed, not more. Under SD1, jail time could be imposed for seniors storing cannabis in a glass jar instead of its original packaging, driving long after impairment wears off, using cannabis in a parked car, even by patients as a rescue medicine, and those 18 to 20 possessing a small amount of cannabis, an offense that is currently a imposes only a $130 fine. I implore you to amend SD1 to remove recriminalization and law enforcement largesse and to address the other issues outlined in my written comments. Also, to respond to another witness, 10 years of data shows that teen cannabis use is down, not up, in states with legalization. We support legalization, but it should be rooted in equity and justice, not a gotcha approach of Prohibition 2.0. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have Drug Policy Forum Hawaii, Nicholas Leverance. Thank you for providing comments. Aloha, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, members. Uh, Nicholas Leverance with Drug Policy Forum of Hawaii. For over half a century, the war on cannabis, like the drug, larger drug war, has undermined and denigrated the health, safety, and welfare of those from under resourced Native Hawaiian, Pacifica, and Black communities. And we support efforts to turn the page on this unfortunate history that we have here in this state and this nation and to prepare our small farmers and small businesses to participate in the prospective national and global uh, cannabis marketplace. Uh, mahalo for your attention to this matter. Okay, thank you very much. Next we have um, Robert Benz, Hawaii Sustainable Farms in Opposition. Robert Benz, are you present on Zoom? All of our senators, I'm president. Uh, please proceed, you have one minute. I am in strong opposition to this bill. It's over two pounds. I don't think many people have actually read it or the 555 pages of testimony. The legal definition of hemp already bans what the AG claims are loopholes. The advice canra in that THCA was legal is incorrect. See the work cited on my testimony. The H2H law enforcement already <laughs> has all the authority and powers they need. Hempcrete is especially important for us in Kula with the fires. The simple solution to this bill, let everyone over 21 grow at least 10 plants per person, sell to other adults, reduce the amazing amount of regulations in here. Nobody except for regulators is happy with this bill. It's bad for locals. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next, we have Coalition for Drug Free Hawaii in opposition. Greg Chab I, I can't yeah. pronounce. Please proceed. Hello. Good morning. Uh, chair's Vice Chair. Um, I stand on my testimony. My name is Greg Chapkis with Coalition for Drug Free Hawaii. Um, you were asking about have other uh, states, how are they coping with it, that sort of thing. Um, I think this study, I'm sure you're aware of it from the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City from October of 2023, um, they did a study on the legalized states. And so these guys are uh, actuaries and, and I'll just read a section of the abstract. We find moderate economic gains, which everyone talks about, accompanied by some social cost. Post legalization, average state income grew by 3%, house prices by 6%, which we don't need and population by 2%. However, substance use disorders, chronic homelessness and arrests increased by 17, 35 and 13% respectively. I think the costs are gonna outweigh the benefits and it's, uh, it's here in the study, I can send you a link to it, but it's also referenced in my testimony. Thank you very Thank much, you. Greg. Okay, next up, Oahu Cannabis Farm <laughs> Alliance, Jason Hanley in opposition. Jason, you present? Okay, moving on. Tina Yamaki, Retail Merchants of Hawaii in opposition. Tina, okay, moving on. Eve Andrade, Hawaii Family Forum in opposition. Please proceed. Good morning, chairs. <clears throat> and anyway, I appreciate the opportunity to testify in opposition. I'm Eva Andrade, I'm the president and CEO of Hawaii Family Forum. And really, our concern is not only for the detriment to our keiki, but also to the families. 
this legislature has done so much good work to fight homelessness and to make sure that vaping is taken care of. And we truly believe that if you go this route, you're going to have detrimental effects to all the good work that you've done on mental health issues, suicide, and all of that. So at this point, we are strongly opposed. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Next, we have Jen Flanagan in support. Jen, are you present? Please proceed. You have one minute. Thank you, Madam Chair, Vice Chairs, and Committee Members. My name is Jennifer Flanagan. I'm testifying in favor of Senate Bill 3335. I'm a former Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commissioner holding the public health seat appointed by former Governor Baker, a former state senator and state representative from Massachusetts. As one of the five inaugural commissioners, it was our responsibility to create the regulatory agency and stand up the legalized cannabis market, while at the same time ensuring that taxpayer dollars were spent efficiently. Originally, I voted against cannabis legalization in Massachusetts. However, through my work at the commission, I now understand the importance of a legalized and regulated market and its value to the state's economy. I commend Hawaii on its due diligence in exploring legalized cannabis and providing policies and programs that allow regulators to be nimble in their regulations. Reasonable policy and programs will lead to greater business participation and implementation moving forward. We worked hard in Massachusetts to strike the right balance between statutory requirement and regulatory opportunity, and it's proven to be effective. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer questions. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Victor Makikau, Skokoka, and support. Good morning, Chairs. Thank you for your time. Um, Victor Makikau, Skokoka. I'm the Director of Cultivation at Big Island Grown. I come from uh, Volcano Hawaii today in support of 3335. Um, a little bit of comments is as director of cultivation for one of the current dispensaries in the dispensary system, I've seen an abundant amount of opportunity being brought to the community through you know, career opportunities, um, as well as just proliferation of uh, you know, um, general opportunities within the system. Um, you know, heavy support. I, I believe the amendments, I think the rollout cost could be, you know, brought down significantly. There's a lot of other states that have successfully rolled out the programs uh, for much lower cost and um, agree with the uh, expediting of kind of the current players in the in the system to begin that transition to uh, not allow kind of the illicit market to gain foothold. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay, next we have. Okay. Justin Paiva in support. Justin, are you present? Next we have Jennifer Brown in support. Jennifer? Okay, next we have Drew Daniels in support. Okay. Justin Paiva. Okay, Justin Paiva first and then um, I see um, <laughs> Drew Daniels. Please proceed, you have one minute. Aloha chairs, my name is Justin Paiva. I'm a lifelong resident on the Big Islands District 2. Today, I implore your support for Senate Bill 3335, a cannabis bill that embodies compassion and hope for all residents here in the state of Hawaii. Senate Bill 3335 is a lifeline offering hope and healing beyond mere legislation. It also safeguards our communities, and most importantly, our youth. With over 80% voter support behind legal legalization, Senate Bill 3335 regulates and taxes the industry, addressing the black market and potentially generating significant tax revenue. Estimated at over 30 million annually, reaching 80 million as the industry matures. And while the bill requests 38 million for program establishment, similar initiatives in Massachusetts and Alaska suggest that this can be achieved at a fraction of the cost, aligned with Hawaii's budget constraints. I urge you to champion Senate Bill 3335, ensuring access to cannabis for all in need. Thank Take you me. very much. Thank you. Drew Daniels, um, in support. Good morning, Chairs, Hello, okay. members. My name is Drew Daniels. I'm uh, giving testimony in support of 3335. Uh, I currently work at one of the um, licensed eight in the state. And uh, in the last three and a half years, I've traveled all over the country and I've seen the potential that this, that this creates. Uh, in my travels, I've met people from Hawaii pretty much everywhere. Every single one of them says almost the same exact thing to me. I wish I could come home and work in this industry. Uh, I, I think that this uh, legalization has the potential to not only keep Hawaii's young workforce home, I think it has potential to bring it home. 
That's why I'm in support. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next, we have Jennifer Brown. I don't know if I mentioned your name earlier in support. Next, we have Michael Medeiros in support. Michael, please just come on up. You have one minute. <clears throat> Well, chairs and committee members, thank you for the opportunity to testify in strong support of SB 3335. My name is Mike Maders. I am native Hawaiian from Hilo. I have lived in California and Colorado and seen the positive benefits that cannabis can have on a community. When I moved back to Hawaii from Colorado, I was excited to become a part of the positive change for Hawaii. Cannabis has had a, such a positive impact on my life. It helped me when I did not want to re rely on opiates and pain relief uh, for pain relief and still to this day helps me cope with the regular pain. I firmly believe that every adult deserves the right to decide whether they can use cannabis without fear of judgment or imprisonment. In addition to personal benefits, the measure will establish a tax revenue stream for the state that has the potential to generate roughly 30 million per year of initial sales and over 80 million per year when the industry fully matures. Cannabis has already been bought. Thank you very much, Michael. Right, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, next we have Leah Kekaulua in support. Hi, aloha. Chairs and committee members, my name is Leah Kekaulua. I live on the Big Island District 2. I rest on my testimony and support and just wanted to highlight the amazing opportunities and growth it has afforded some of, uh, some of these folks from the unregulated market. Some of them never had a real job and today they are flourishing working in a structured environment. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Next we have Jeffrey Hong in support. Please proceed. Hello, Chairs. My name is Jeffrey Hong. Uh, I stand by my uh, testimony and support. Uh, I am also the chair of Hawaiian Ethos, one of the uh, licensees on the Big Island. Um, and I'm available for questions in that matter. Too. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Wendy Gibson Viviani providing comments. Wendy, are you present on Zoom? I yes, see. I am. Okay, you have one minute. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for this opportunity. My name is Wendy Gibson Viviani. I'm a cannabis nurse and a medical cannabis patient advocate, and I support legalization. I would like to stand on my written testimony, which outlines my concerns about portions of this bill that could have devastating impacts on our medical cannabis patients. My first concern is about the blood test, which will be used to determine if a driver is impaired. Multiple reports from the United States Department of Transportation show that it's not possible to conclude anything about a driver's impairment based on the THC levels in the blood. So it doesn't matter if you keep setting the limit higher, the test is not scientifically validated to determine impairment. So sober patients could be criminalized. And then the second concern is about the new crime of having an open container in the car. So just know that some chemotherapy patients need to pre-medicate in a parked car before they're- Thank you, Wendy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, next we have Daniel Chinen in opposition. Daniel, you present? Okay, next we have, he's outside. <laughs> okay, thank you. You have one minute. Thank you, chairs, members of the committee. I'm just going to spare you guys what I wrote and just share from my heart. I'm just a concerned father, husband, uh, born and raised person from Kaneohe. And I just want to say that, you know, Hawaii is Hawaii. We're not California. We're not Massachusetts. We're not Colorado. I don't think we need to be following those examples. If we were to look at those statistics, we do have statistics in opposition for this. And just as a father, my son is in middle school. They already have a big problem with vaping. And so now you're going to add on more problems already. So it's not even just about the future. It's about the present right now. So yeah, appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Lynn Murakami Akatsuka in opposition. Lynn, are you present? Nobody out there? Okay, next we have on Zoom, Grant Overton for Agri Pelago in opposition. Are you present, Greg Overton? 
I am. No Thank you for the time today. Uh, Grant Overton from AgriPelago. So we work on creating high protein food and renewable fuel from industrial hemp on Oahu. Uh, we're a startup company. I am massively opposed to this bill. It basically kills any investability, any viability going forward for the industrial hemp industry in Hawaii. Uh, I can explain very briefly why. When you go through investment due diligence, these are things you look into. The ambiguity surrounding this and the convolution of applications for cannabinoids, your THC compounds and medical cannabis with things like biofuel, food, and other energy applications that go into building materials like they're working on in Maui has nothing to do with medical cannabis. So unless we intend to kill the industrial hemp industry locally, I strongly advocate for pulling all elements of this out of the bill. Thank you for the time today. Okay, thank you very much. Next, we have Joshua Seifman in opposition. Joshua, are you present? They're unavailable, sir. Okay, next we have Jed Tesoro in opposition on Zoom. Jed, are you They're present? They're also unavailable. Okay, next we have Margaret Lim in opposition in person. Margaret? Outside? Margaret, are you Margaret? Okay, please come on up. Good morning, chairs and members of the committee. I'm Margaret Lim. I'm a concerned mother. My son is 30 years old. When he was 18, he started using marijuana in private school. And to this day, he is numb, dumb, and he is not able to function. He got into a major car accident also. Um, he is not any better medically, socially, or relationally. In our state, we, we cannot already control our crime, violence, and homelessness problem. How, how can we control the massive and serious problems which will be unintentionally ushered in by legalizing recreational marijuana? Since medical marijuana is already legalized, there is no need to legalize recreational marijuana. We should focus on making Hawaii a better place, a cleaner, safer for business to thrive, and for Japanese and Chinese tourists to keep coming back. We recently visited downtown Seattle, Portland, Oregon. Much. Okay, next we have um, Joy Chinen in opposition. Joy, are you present? Are you present outside? Come on up, you have one minute. Mm -hmm. Aloha. I am in strong opposition to this because I have grandchildren that are in um, elementary school and we had a conversation. Oh. Identify yourself first. Oh, my name is Joy Chinin. Thank you. And um, we had a discussion with them and they um, were afraid of having this kind of law in our Hawaii because they said that what if their friends at school gave them gummies or brownies, they wouldn't know um, what to do and so i am in strong opposition to this please don't do this to our hawaii okay thank you very much okay these are all the people who have registered to testify i'm just going to read out list of the written testimony and that is um hawaii police department in opposition maui county department of prosecuting attorney in opposition maui police department in opposition um augie tolba council member for district nine in opposition Cultivation Sector Consulting, LLC, and Support, NOAA Botanicals and Support, Patients Without Time and Support, Hawaii Children Action Network Speaks, providing comments, Healthcare Association of Hawaii, providing comments, Law Enforcement Action Partnership, providing comments, Cannabis Society of Hawaii, providing comments, Democratic Party of Hawaii, providing comments, The Imaging Public Safety in Hawaii Coalition, providing comments, Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement providing comments, Hawaii Substance Abuse Coalition in opposition, One Impact Hawaii in opposition, Phono Records in opposition, Hawaii High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area in opposition, Hawaii Salmon opposition, Weed and Seed Hawaii in opposition, Hawaii Farmers Union United Haleakala in opposition, Hawaii Farmers Union in opposition, um, Dennis and a number of people in support. About how many? on it and there's also a number of people in opposition Did you guys count it okay i'm sorry it's it's on the top um 46 
48 individuals, seven businesses, two government in opposition, 155 in support, 155 individuals, 13 businesses, eight government in opposition, comments by six individuals, eight, 19 businesses and seven government entities. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 3335? Okay, Jason. Okay, um, you both start uh, start lining up. Okay, Jason, you got one minute. One minute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Calvin Chinet, are you here in person? Sorry, uh, he did register. I registered. I registered. I understand, but if I passed you over, you got to wait your turn now. So, so yes, please, you have one minute. All right, I'm Cal Chinen, and aloha to all of you. I'm going to speak on behalf of my grandchildren that this is not going to be good for them. Already, we cannot control illegal fireworks, and we've made it legal. We sell it in logs and whatever, but look at what's happening with all the aerials and everything. We legalize this and market this. We're opening up a can of worms. We cannot even control fireworks even just last night after super bowl fireworks going off you know if we cannot control fireworks how are we going to control this my kids are going to be walking my grandkids are going to be walking past shop after shop after shop as they're going to school their friends are going to be offering it to them you know families are going to get destroyed families are going to get destroyed that's a guarantee you know it's already happening it's going to happen even more and we're going to and we're going to stand behind it we cannot let this pass. We cannot let this pass. Okay, thank you very Hello. much. Okay, I, I know that there's a number of people who registered. Jason Hanley, go one minute, and then the other person behind you who registered that we passed over for. Um, Jason, you got okay. one minute. Uh, Aloha Committee, uh, Jason Hanley from the Iwanu Cannabis Farm Alliance. Uh, we're in opposed to this bill right now as it stands. Um, if the true intent of this bill is to bring in the legacy market and the gray market into this, um, into this fold, uh, right now, I've interviewed a lot of people from Massachusetts, and it's just not affordable for the small farmer and the legacy grower. Uh, with the overregulation and the permit fees and the licensing fees, even a small 500-foot grow in Massachusetts is running up to $500,000. So there's a lot in this bill right now that we just have to work out and, and see how we can move forward. Um, we do agree with a lot of the testimony in here, the people that are worried about their children and communities. We do feel like empowering a medical cannabis program and rewriting that, uh, which we have in uh, in bill right now, SB 2619, provides community support, community health, uh, community involvement, moving forward with cannabis laws and rights. So we're all on the same page and we all can look at our neighbors and go, hey, I feel safe. Thank you That's very much, Jason. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. next up, um, who has registered and please identify yourself. Aloha, my name is James Yamada. I'm an electrical contractor, as well as a pastor in a church that runs a trans transitional home for addicts that want to get well. There was a study done by, done by Kaiser Permanente in the 80s called Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. It documents that anyone exposed to a high degree of psychological, physical, sexual abuse and others are between four to 12 times more likely to become an addict and they have increased health risk for alcoholism, drug abuse, depression, suicide, etc. The book In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts documents that anyone with childhood trauma has a high likelihood of using drugs to deal with the trauma that is implanted in their brains. Marijuana is one of the entryway drugs that, turn, that they turn to. Youth that don't avail themselves of the social emotional learning concepts in school that should help them deal with trauma, lose hope in the opportunities Thank that life should much. have for them. Thank you. Okay, come on up, identify yourself. Aloha nui kao my name is Hiva Kaopuni and I'm here today um, from Hilo expressing my support of the bill. After being controversially subjected to US law, Hawaii underwent the criminalization of cannabis and has since had to deal with the continued war on cannabis with both racial and capitalistic driving forces. More than 80% of Hawaii voters are in support of safe and guided access to cannabis for responsible adult use. Today's legal but very limited, stringent and expensive medical access has not minimized patients patient dependency on the illicit market here, and instead encourages cannabis products of uncertain composition to be sold illegally, no rules, no tax, no standard. This bill has 
can set forth quality assurance practices like monitored cultivation, accurate labeling, and batch testing from seed to sale, ensuring that any possible health risks of cannabis used here um, in Hawaii are minute compared to two widely used legal substances, alcohol and tobacco. All of this for significantly less than the proposed 38 million, and in turn creating a far greater tax revenue towards funding healthcare, substance abuse and drug education for youth, law enforcement, schools, and local governments, none of which need to be consumers to be stakeholders. I hope, legal, I hope legislation will continue the effort to normalize the regulated use of cannabis okay, so you. everyone may safely arrive if they choose to. Thank you. Okay, come on up, identify yourself and tell us whether or not you're support or in opposition. Aloha Chair, uh, members of the committee, Alan Cardenas Jr. from Nanakuli, Hawaii. We have major problems. Are in, you in support or uh, I'm sorry, opposition, strong opposition. We have major problems on our side of the island with homicides up over 80%, homeless problems, school campuses out of control, and a whole host of problems. Um, I'll just run down the ABCs. It's, we're dealing with children who are addicted to this stuff. Um, we see people, children and families with brain disorders, mental illness. We hear a lot about that. Criminal activity, a lot of the, our youths that are in trouble, especially with the shootings, um, the roots of the problem stems back to uh, the use of marijuana. Um, it's dangerous and it's deadly. It's an economic nightmare. Um, you can't put up costs and a price of life. We had a number of suicides just in the last year alone due to the root problem of the ABCs of this stuff. It is, it is dangerous, it is deadly, and I strongly oppose, oppose this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up. Please identify yourselves, say support and opposition in your testimony. Hello, I'm Marion Logan. I stand in opposition to this. Thank you for having us here today. I just want to emphasize that this is not legalization of weed. It's a euphemism. This is the commercialization of THC. And with that, we're inviting big business. It's all masked and helping the local farmers. This is what we are inviting with big business. We up marketing. It's going to it's going to hurt our youth. Business uses business tactics. They're looking for new clients and that's what they're going to go for. And this is the vulnerable population that's going to be exposed. Thank you for your time. I stand in direct opposition. Thank you very much. Okay, next up. Aloha, I'm Mikela. Thank you all so much for uh, working so hard to serve our people here in Hawaii. Um, I stand in opposition of this bill. I'm just a local girl, a mom. I work with youth and um, recreational marijuana has personally destroyed my family. When my parents were just 17, 18 years old, yes, they went to the beach, they hung out with their friends and they smoked weed. Little did they know that many years down the line, it would lead to a life of addiction. It led our family down a road of methamphetamine, of fentanyl, of domestic violence, of incarceration, and a continuation of generational curses that was passed down to multiple generations in our family. And this is not an uncommon story. This is a common thing that happens here in our people of Hawaii. Marijuana is not a part of our culture. Sugarcane, Pineapple, marijuana, not part of our culture. It's not, it's an invasive species. And I appreciate all of you for serving our Hawaii and I just want to stand on behalf of our family. Thank so you. thank you so much. Okay, next up. Aloha, my name is Jacob Chung. I oppose Bill 3335, um, you know, Looking at some of you brothers over here, like Carl, I know Carl. You guys are, you know, we live here. This is our land. Now, you guys, when you guys retire, you guys going back to your motherland, where you got, wherever you guys come from. But we gotta live here with our people. I'm surprised that some of the legislators are even considering this. Let, you know, let alone because it's gonna affect their children later down the road. So, you know, uh, I, I I really ask that you guys really look at it. And think about it, because this is not going to only affect your, your children. Probably your children are older already, but it's going to affect grandchildren, great grandchildren down the line. Now we got we got problems with homelessness, and they got shelters for them, but they don't go in there. You know why? 
because they cannot do their addiction. That's why they stay out of it. So now, how are we dealing with the homeless? That's that's a big problem. So I I just want to say I oppose it, and I hope you guys consider. Thank you. Leave a good legacy for us. Leave a good legacy because you guys going to go back. You going to go back to your okay, homeland. Thank you very much. Okay. Next up. Good morning, Chair and all members of the committee. I stand here as Please an identify yourself. I'm sorry. My name is Carol Miyashiro. I'm a retired high school teacher from the state of Hawaii. Uh, I have personally met students where their families have been destroyed because so of So you stand death. in support or opposition? I, I'm sorry, I am opposed. Okay. I am strongly, strongly opposed to the legalization of this illegal drug. And I have seen the destruction of families, of high school students, teenagers, at the time when young men growing up need their fathers, their fathers are not with them. Many of them have been incarcerated. Once one teenage boy told me that he could not see his dad because his mother had to put a TRO on him because his father was using elementary school kids to sell drugs. I think it is the destruction of family and that this is not what you as legislators would want on your hands. Thank you very much. Thank okay, you. anybody else wishing to testify on SB 335 SD1? Um, seeing on members, any questions? Uh, Aloha, Chair. This is Gail Byrne Baber, Hawaii Hemp Farmers Association. Can, may I have one moment? Okay, please proceed. You have one minute. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. I must have had technical difficulties earlier and was passed over. Um, Gail Byrne, Hawaii Hemp Farmers Association. We are strongly opposed to this bill for um, reasons that were enumerated by Grant Overton and Robert. <laughs> It is likely going to decimate the Hawaii Hemp Farmers Association. We've provided a lot of data and analysis from experts in cannabis on hemp regarding that. And these folks collect more data than any state agency. I'm specifically speaking about um, Bo Whitney, than any government agency or any nonprofit. And they're warning us against including marijuana and hemp in the same commingling legislation because we're more than likely to lose our business services. Um, and that there are a number of items in there that are actually actionable. I've also informally spoken with folks from the dispensary industry. They're very concerned that including hemp is going to slow down implementation and blow this the cost for this bill for recreational. Okay, sorry. We cut you off after one minute. I see somebody else willing to testify. Please identify yourself. Oh, and, and after this, we're going to do a recess. Please proceed, identify yourself, opposition or in support. Um, hi, I'm Robin Clark. I strongly oppose this bill. <clears throat> My family and I, along with our community, survived the Lahaina wildfire uh, because we're a family unit, but we got closer through this because we have a strong family foundation. Our community got closer because of a strong Ohana culture. We will recover and we will rebuild. Why don't uh, you go outside with that? Thank you. If you pass this bill to encourage rampant drug use, not, not the medical side, but it's like freely recreational with no law, no enforcement can stop it. The devastation for our state will be worse and unrecoverable than the Lahaina wildfire. There will be no FEMA or Red Cross. They won't be able to help because you will be destroying the family unit. Drug use and family don't go together in the same sentence. <laughs> Every talented, contrib contributing, productive person will not want to live in a state filled with uh, potheads and drug dealers. And what you will be like. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, um, I, I think it goes without saying to silence your phones because it's disrespectful for those who are testifying. Anybody else wishing to testify in SB 335? Okay, we are going to go for a recess at this time. Okay, some of you may be here for the uh, uh, the JD the Judiciary Committee's ten o'clock hearing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and recess that hearing, and we will pick it up after this hearing is over if we get done 
uh, before we have to leave for session. If not, we will announce uh, when we're deferring the, um, the hearing too. So I'll recess the 10 o'clock JDC hearing. Okay, recalling the um, joint HHS JDC nine o'clock calendar, um, we are back to, are there anybody else wishing to testify on SB 335 SD1? <coughs> Seeing none, members, any questions? Okay, Senator Elefante, please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there a representative from the Department of Tax? Oh, Suganuma was here. Hi, good morning, chairs, vice chairs, member uh, Josh Michaels, acting rules officer, Department of Taxation. I apologize, Director Suganuma had to step out to okay. another hearing. No, no problem. Um, I want to go back to one of the testifiers before. I believe it was Hawaii Appleseed, and they referenced the cannabis tax pig report. Um, I'm sorry, the Hawaii Appleseed in their testimony. They okay. referenced in their footnote a Hawaii cannabis uh, pig report that was in conjunction with the tax department, but on a previous administration. Okay. So I was just curious to know if the current administration stands by that report. And then secondly, does Dole Tax have updated figures on projected revenues uh, if this bill were to pass? I am actually not familiar with the report, so I don't want to speak out of turn, but I'm happy to follow up with our tax research and planning folks, and I'll get that information to the chairs ASAP. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions, members? Okay, Senator, I'm Chair Rhodes. Please proceed. Uh, is uh, American Cancer Society still here? No. Okay, never mind. Thank you. Okay, members, any other questions? Seeing none, do we need to recess for decision making? Um, yeah, probably. Okay, we're going to recess for decision making. Okay, um, we are waiting for, uh, well, I don't know, maybe we're not waiting. Okay, you can call, call in for decision making on the HHS calendar. Um, yeah, we'll HHS. just go later, that's fine. Okay, sounds good, thank you very much. So for SB 335 SD1, Chair's recommendation is, um, excuse me, 3335 <laughs> SD1. May I have it back? Uh, Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. We are going to accept. Um, they, they can't hear you from there, Joey. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I had my decision making notes and we had we were gonna go to the JDC <laughs> calendar. So 335 SD1, Chair's recommendation three, three, is three, three, five. 3335. Let's make sure we're we're voting on this right correct <laughs> bill. SB. Three, 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 five, SD1. Chair's recommendation is we are going to pass this with amendments. First, we're going regarding the Attorney General's proposed, I mean, proposed amendments. I'm sorry to interrupt, Chair. So are, we're accepting the proposed SD, and then you're going to amend it, then you want, you're going to amend it some more, is that? No, um, the notice, excuse me, let, let's have a short recess. You can just explain no, Okay, never mind. We, we won't do a short recess. Um, the amended notice of hearing had the proposed SD1. Right, so are we accepting the proposed SD1? Yes. Okay, and then you're, and we're proposing an Yes, SD1. sorry. Okay, okay. Just, sorry. Just double checking. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Rhodes, for the clarification. We are accepting the proposed SD1, and we're going to be passing that with a number of amendments. First amendment would be um, regarding the Attorney General's proposed uh, um, remarks. We are going to add a section to the Cannabis Control Board section, section I, basically that at the first hearing, at the first hearing of the Cannabis Control Board, the majority shall nominate and elect. Uh, the chair and vice chair of the Cannabis Control Board. In the event of a tie, the governor shall cast the tie-breaking vote. 
we are going to accept the Attorney General's proposed amendment to the exculpatory section by removing the word distribution. We are then also going to accept um, the proposed amendments by Department of Taxation. We are going to note for those who did not watch the informational briefing regarding the hemp farmers that this bill substantially retains the regulations that exist for hemp farmers, but puts it into the Cannabis Control Committee Association, Cannabis, the CIA, um, and note that if they looked at the taxation under this bill, there are only industrial hemp will only be taxed the GE tax and not the cannabis tax that is being projected for all other cannabis bills, for all other cannabis um, material. We are going to also accept the Attorney General's proposed amendment to add, to add in the original um, employees number of employees into the OMCCR staff that was removed by SD1. And basically note um, to those in opposition to really look at this bill and especially the fact that the FDA is going to schedule this, the high likelihood pretty soon, okay? I mean, that's where, and that's where the legislature is looking at trying to regulate ahead of time. Any comments, questions, concerns, passing with amendments for HHS committee? Oh, we're also going to add in a defect date because this is a continuing discussion. Um, as somebody noted, you know, we've got like three inches of written testimony here. Any comments, questions, concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair, for the vote, Chair votes aye. Passing Senate, with amendments. Thank you, Chair. Senate Bill 3335. Recommendation is to pass with amendments. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes with reservations. Senator Keo Kalole. Aye. Senator Shimabukuro. Reservations. Senator Owa. Aye. Recommendation is adopted, Chair. Thank you. Okay, for JC members, the recommendation will be the same, but um, we're going to wait to get um, Senator Gabbard is on his way down, I believe, and we will wait until we get him here before we vote. So we will, in the meantime, we will go into our 10 o'clock JDC hearing. Okay, so for HHS, um, we are adjourned. Do I gavel? Yep. Okay. Are you going to be able to repeat that? Uh, what do I need? Re repeat yeah. my. Do you need to the amendments? Yes, I will repeat it okay. when Mike when, when Mike comes okay, in. Great. I gotta. All right, uh, um, Mayu, let's uh, go ahead and go back into the ten o'clock JDC hearing. Um, I need my. I need what I sent out. Okay. My my master testimony. Uh, HHS. Uh, I emailed everyone my proposed testimony. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Chair. Uh, we're still live, so we can go in. How do I get word back in here? Go ahead. Yep, sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're still live, so we can't. No, no. She, she gaveled out of the joint hearing, and we want to gavel back in on the JDC only hearing at the 10 o'clock agenda. Uh -huh. so we, need to, we need to go back in. Oh, yes. Yeah. We're still rolling, so you can just continue. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, everyone. We're going to go to the uh, JDC hearing, the Judiciary Committee hearing at 10 now. First up, um, so you've already seen all the rules, it, it, except that for this hearing, it's a two-minute time limit. And um, if we have to, if we have a technical crash, we're going to delay until... Uh, we'll delay until Tuesday the 20th at uh, 10 a.m. in this room 016 if there's a crash on the Zoom side. Okay, so first bill up on the 10 o'clock agenda is HB 159 exempts the notarization requirement for renewals of liquor licenses. First up on 
HB159 is Leo Sandoval Reyes, Director of Liquor Control for Kauai Department of Liquor Control uh, in support. Next is Salvador D. Petilos for the Honolulu Liquor Commission uh, in support. Next is Mayor Bisson from Maui, also in support. Yima, uh, Tina, Yama, Tina Yamaki, President of Retail Merchants Hawaii, on Zoom perhaps. They're unavailable on Zoom chair. Okay, she is in support as well. Next up is Jeffrey Hong, uh, CEO of Techmana LLC. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Chair. Um, yeah, I stand with my testimony and support. I'm currently serving as the chair of the Honolulu Liquor Commission. Certainly, it was uh, it caused some slowdown and and uh, uh, barriers for people to renew last year. And so, we look forward to getting this bill passed this year. Okay, thank you. Next is Kenneth Hu in support. That's everybody who signed up on HB 159. Does anyone want to switch to testify on HB 159 here or on Zoom? Seeing none, members, questions? I don't have any either. Let's go ahead and move on to S SB 2683 relating to defamation protects individuals who make claims of sexual misconduct from defamation lawsuits unless the claims are proven to be made with malice. First up on this is Marcus Kawatachi, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Rhodes, members of the committee. Um, the Marcus Kawatachi, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission. We stand in strong support of this measure. Uh, the one concern we had was language concerning to uh, relating to immunity, and uh, we thought that better language would be uh, defining what happens when uh, there is a defamation lawsuit and the standard of liability would be uh, no liability unless uh, shown with malice. And so that would be our, our one concern. We strand, we, otherwise, we stand in very strong support. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is Elizabeth Jubin Fujiwara for the American Association of University Women of Hawaii in support, um, also testifying for why women's lawyers also in support. Michael Older with comments, Dara Carlin in support. That's everybody who signed up to testify in SB 2683. Does anyone else wish to testify in SB 2683? If not, members questions? Seeing none, I don't have any either. Let's go ahead and move on to SB 2702. This specifies that the practice of election fraud intimidation includes carrying any firearm or weapon and photo, uh, photographing the face of any voter without permission from both the from both the voter and an appropriate election official when these actions occur in or near a voter service center place of deposit or polling place. First up on SB 2702 is Holly Plackett, Legislative Committee for Women, League of Women of, sorry, League of Women Voters of Hawaii uh, in support. Oh, she's here? Oh, no, that's, somebody, that's next. And Jamie Detweiler, President, testifying for Hawaii Federation of Republican Women on Zoom. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. Aloha, Chair Rhodes, Vice Chair Gabbard, and committee members. My name is Jamie Detweiler, President of the Hawaii Federation of Republican Women. The Federation stands in opposition to SB 2702. All of Oahu's places of deposit for voters are in public parks, except for the voter service centers at Honolulu and Kapolehale, which are in government buildings open to the public or outside facing the public sidewalk. May I respectfully remind the committee members that it is our First Amendment right to photograph in public places. The ACLU and State of Hawaii Attorney General agreed that this is a First Amendment right to take photographs in public as affirmed in the 2016 case put forth by the ACLU. The voter service centers are government buildings again, open to the public. Almost all of the places of deposit are in public parks. So are all the newscasters going to need to get permission from every voter inside the halles and on the sidewalks before filming? Are citizen journalists required to obtain the same permission? These are questions I think the committee should ponder before um, rendering their decision. For these reasons, I respectfully request that you vote no on SB 2702.
Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Mahalo. Thanks very much. Next is Jesse Ojeda, Guns and Democracy Fellow for Gifford's Law Center to Prevent Gun Violence and Support. Next is Corinne Solom Solomon sorry, on Zoom. Good morning. Good morning. Aloha, Senate Judiciary Chair Rhodes and committee members. My name is Corinne Solomon and I oppose Senate Bill 2702. Um, I understand that the intent of this bill is to protect voters and nobody wants to see any voter intimidated, but I do have three concerns with the bill. The verbiage election fraud intimidation doesn't make much sense. The United States Election Assistance Commission defines election fraud as the misrepresentation or altering of the results of an election. The e and the EAC definition of voter intimidation, on the other hand, is threat of violence, manipulation, harassment, or fear for the purpose of influencing how a person votes. Voter intimidation is unrelated to altering the true results of an election. Secondly, all of Oahu's ballot places of deposit are in public parks, except for the Hales, which one of them has a uh, drop box facing the public sidewalk. This is a, uh, in response to a 2016 complaint from the Hawaii ACLU, the Attorney General reiterated that it is a First Amendment right to take photos in public, and this bill violates our First Amendment right, as the places of deposit are in public parks. Lastly, the sensitive places law already covers government buildings, which is where the voter service centers are located. The sensitive places law does not apply to public parks. That was determined last year in the Wolford versus Lopez ruling. The problems with this bill is that it applies private property laws to public places. If you want to truly protect voters from firearm concealed carry permits, I recommend that you defer this bill and respectfully ask the county clerks to put all of the uh, places of deposit inside government buildings. Sorry, I'm sick. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity to provide testimony this morning. Thank you very much for being here. Next is William Iella, Iella in person, uh, in opposition. Okay, that's everyone who signed up to Zoom or to testify in person. Does anyone else wish to testify in SB 2702, either here or on Zoom? Um, if not, the rest of the testimony was overwhelmingly opposed. There was total, there was eight in support, 96 in opposition, nobody with comments. Uh, members, questions? Uh, yes. Senator San Buenaventura. Um, anybody from Legal Women Voters or Giffords or ACLU here? Um, yeah, ACL, you're going to come on up. Senator, I just have to disclose that I haven't had a chance to review this particular bill. I was here for the other two hearings. Yes, I, I, I understand. And I, I did not see your um, testimony, but then it was referred to by a number of people um, claiming that ACLU opposes this bill. So. Has ACLU made a had a position? We don't have a position at this time. I can consult with our legal director and get back to this committee. We appreciate that. I appreciate. Okay, thank you. Um, you know what? Stick around. I I have a question. Okay, it's regarding the um, unintended consequences of photographing people, uh, voters, because it seems to me that there should be a carve out for. Um, public interest. And because we have vote by mail, a majority of the voters are already voting by mail. So those who are at voter centers are the last minute voters. And the reason that there would be photographs, it seems to me when I see it, is to try to get people to, this is the absolute deadline to vote. So that's when you see camera crews out there. Doesn't seem to me, that there is, unless that there's like a First Amendment freedom of the press type exclusion um, to allow for the media, even social media, influencers and the like to be able to photograph the long line saying that this is the last day to absolutely vote. We would just generally be concerned if there is essentially more surveillance on a certain group of people in terms yeah. of their voting as compared to others who are exercising the right to vote from home. But again, I would have to defer to our legal director and I will get back to you, Senator. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Other Any questions? other questions? 
Okay, seeing none, let's go ahead and move on to SB 2706. This is relating to the expungement of criminal records. It expands eligibility for and automates the expungement of conviction, conviction records if certain criteria are met. First up on 2706 is John Ginaga for the public defender. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, good morning, Chair, Co Chair, and uh, Committee members. Office of the Public Defender strongly supports Senate Bill number 2706. Um, Currently, in order to have judiciary records and other information pertaining to the arrest or case sealed or removed from the judiciary's public accessible database, an individual for whom an expungement order is already granted is required to avail himself of yet another process petitioning the court via motion to remove the relevant matters from the public accessible database, um, GEMS, eCourt Kokua, JEPS. Um, the additional requirement of finding, filing a motion to the court says the records removed takes time and that's time that many applicants um, for expungement do not have. Um, many people rely on expeditious expungement of their record of their cases because they have specific employment in mind and want to apply without any impediments or complications. Furthermore, the average person may not understand the nature and process of petitioning the court for this type of relief. Um, many people may need to hire an attorney. They don't have the means to do so. Um, having the process of automatic um, removal from the systems will just will streamline the process um, for people who need their expungements um, ASAP and will eliminate the expense of hiring an attorney. Um, you know, we've seen the um, problems caused that background checks can have on jobs, schools, mortgage applications, and more. Um, even one conviction, sometimes even just one arrest, can um, follow people for years. And more and more, we are learning that a criminal record affects not just more than just job applications and employment. Sometimes a criminal record, sometimes just an arrest can affect loan applications, housing, insurance rates, education, licensing, and certifications, adoptions, and federal assistance. So we support the automatic expansion of the records of the process outlined by this bill. We also support the um, expansion to um, the enumerated or offenses that are um, set forth in the bill. Um, as we believe that this is um, well crafted to um, take out offenses, which yeah, are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, next up is Thomas Berger, staff attorney for the judiciary. Rest on our testimony in opposition. Okay, thank you. Next is Albert. Oh, I'm sorry. Albert Cook for the attorney general. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. Members of the uh, Albert Cook, Deputy Attorney General from the Criminal Justice Division of the Department of Attorney Generals, and the Department opposes this bill. Um, criminal records are necessary for law enforcement, prosecutors, and judiciary uh, to evaluate past behavior of defendants and to appropriately charge, sentence, and supervise those in the criminal justice system. And criminal records are also necessary for the members of the public, for landlords and employers who are seeking to evaluate those who they are when invite into their homes or their businesses, and just members of the public who just need information on people that they may be um, dealing with in certain situations. The department is opposed to all automatic expungement, um, but especially opposed to the automatic expungement in this bill of all misdemeanors, petty misdemeanors, and uh, nonviolent class C penalties. And we've listed a number of crimes that would be affected by this provision. Um, additionally, automatic expungement creates issues in some circumstances for those who are pending trial on new charges um, that qualifies repeat offenders um, for those who are under court supervision or for um, charges such as operating a vehicle under the influence of an intoxicant or DUIs that have a longer look back period than the windows in this bill for automatic expungement. The automatic expungement would affect a lot of those situations because they could still be pending trial as a repeat offender and then while pending trial the um, their underlying offense could be automatically expunged. Uh, same for those who could be on probation for longer than the, than the windows in here. And then while they're still under court supervision, their convictions, which they're on probation for, could be expunged. Um, lastly, there are practical technical problems with automatic expungement um, for the Hawaii Criminal Justice Data Center, as outlined in our testimony. It will be available for questions. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, let's see. Next up is panel Ferguson Gray, Bray, Executive Director of Crime Victim Compensation Commission in opposition. Uh, Rebecca Lique, Prosecuting Attorney for 
why, I guess, yes. In opposition, Maui Prosecutor's Office, in opposition, uh, Alan Bartolome for uh, County of Hawaii Office Prosecuting Attorney, also in opposition, Alice Leo, Program Director for MAD Hawaii, uh, on Zoom perhaps? They're unavailable on Zoom chair. Okay, they're in opposition as well. Lynn Castales Matsuoka, Executive Director of the Sex Abuse Treatment Center. Good morning. Good afternoon, um, committee of the judiciary. My name is Lynn Castales. I am the executive director of Sex and Treatment Center. We are in opposition to this bill, excuse me, as it relates to any sex offense uh, or crime against a child, particularly those offenses that are covered by the sex offender registration statute. Um, I kind of outlined that in my written testimony. And I'm otherwise available for any um, comment or questions that you may have for <coughs> SATC. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Tina Yamaki for Retail Merchants of Hawaii. In, in opposition, uh, Jennifer Brown, Associate Director of Hawaii Innocence Project and Beyond Guilt Hawaii. In support. And that's everybody who signed up to uh, speak in person or on Zoom. Does anyone else wish to testify in SB 2706? Sure. No, no. Hello again. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members, Carrie Ann Chirota on behalf of the ACL of Hawaii. We strongly support this measure, which we'll call as clean sleep. ACLU believes that we should have a society where all people, including those who have been arrested on or convicted for a crime and have paid their debt to society, they get an equal opportunity to contribute to society and build successful and fulfilling lives. Research confirms that criminal records create barriers and in some cases block access to jobs, housing, education, participating in public programs, etc. And this disparately impacts Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders in Hawaii. As the use of background checks have grown, so has the number of laws and restrictions limiting access. People with arrest and conviction records face over 50,000 restrictions. In the digital area, nearly nine in 10 employers, four in five landlords, and three in five colleges now use background checks. This is a measure for workforce development. According to data provided by Prison Policy Initiative and the National Resource Reentry Center, a criminal record reduces a job seeker's chance of getting a callback, a job offer by nearly 50%. Research from the University of Michigan finds that people are 11% more likely to be employed and are earning higher wages one year after a record has been cleared. We understand that there are technical challenges whenever you change the system. This system of converting to state initiated petition expungement has been successfully completed in 12 states. Pennsylvania, Utah, New Jersey, Michigan, Connecticut, Delaware, Virginia, Oklahoma, Colorado, Minnesota, and New York, and California. We can join these clean slate states. We can also benefit from technical assistance from Clean Slate Initiative, which is a national think tank that has helped states transition to this automated or state initiated system using technology, as well as Code for America. And I just want to end with this story. We often think about we can't do something but we can we can actually carve out there's a number of oh, states sorry, of different that, that's so thank you i'm here for questions thank you, Senator. Much. Thank you. anyone else wishing to testify in sb 2706 2706 okay members any questions uh seeing none let's go ahead and move on to the next bill which is sb 2522 it's so also relating to expungement allows persons convicted of certain criminal violations to apply to the court for an expungement order under certain circumstances. First up on 2522 is Albert Cook, Deputy Attorney General. Morning again. Morning again, Chair and members of the committee, Deputy Attorney General Albert Cook from the Criminal Justice Division of the Department. And thank you for the opportunity to provide comments on this bill. Um, the measurement of alcohol section, we don't see any legal or um, constitutional problems with that section. For the section three of the bill, uh, which is the first time property offender section, um, we don't feel like it's going to accomplish the purposes of Act 230, which is codified and under 706-622.9. As such, we propose language that we believe will accomplish the purposes of this bill and Act 230 or HRS 
706-622.9, and I'll be available for comments. Great, thank for you. Questions. Thank you. Uh, next up is Pamela Ferguson Bray, Executive Director, Crime Victim Compensation Com Commission in opposition. Uh, Alice Liu, Program Director for Mad Hawaii on Zoom, maybe? They're unavailable on Zoom, Chair. In opposition, next is John Ikenaga, Public Defender. Good morning again. Good morning again. Um, so just generally, we support this bill to, um, again, it's a, it's a bill which gives um, persons second chances to start anew for certain specified offenses. Um, I believe one of the amendments to the um, underage um, DUI bill, basically, or statute is already a provision in that statute. It's clarifying language. Um, um, while this, while, you know, these offenses may present some issues um, in society, for some offenders who have served their sentence should not have to face a lifetime disclosing something that resulted from a terrible but brief lapse of judgment. So this bill acknowledges the need to give people a second chance and support it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sydney Story for Opportunity Youth Action Hawaii uh, in support. That's everybody who signed up on SB 2522. Does anyone else wish to testify on SB 2522? Seeing none, members' questions? Uh, yeah, public. Senator San Sorry. Thank you, Chair. Yes. So the preamble of this, and, and I apologize, I did not look at the actual 291E-65. I assume that's a driving under the influence section. But the preamble basically refers to um, minors convicted of driving under the influence and first time property offenders to apply for an expungement. Aren't, aren't records for minors sealed already? I mean, why do um, we need to expunge? The 291E-6.5, sorry, I came back. There was, I think, the previous um, driving under, under the uh, under age of 21 with a measurable amount of alcohol. So it, the current statute is um, the subject of the amendment as well. So I think the clarification was to include the pre convictions under the previous statute as well. So this would include people 18 through 21 um, okay. who are convicted of DUI. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? Seeing none, let's go ahead and move on to uh, SB 2757, Aligned State Sex Trafficking Laws with Federal Law by Making the Commercial Sexual Exploitation of a Minor a Form of Sex Trafficking. First up on 27, uh, 2757 is Michelle McCoy for Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Or her designee. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Chair, Vice Chair, and committee members. Uh, Grant Nakaya on behalf of Office of Hawaiian, Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Michelle couldn't make it today. Uh, we stand on our written testimony in support. In support. Thank you. The next is Albert Cook, Deputy Attorney General. Hello again. Good morning, Deputy Chair. Uh, members of the committee, Deputy Attorney General Albert Cook from the Criminal Justice Division of the Department of Attorney General. Uh, we're providing comments on this bill. Uh, this bill is a complex bill with many moving parts that addresses many different laws. So the department first provides language that would effectuate making commercial sexual exploitation of a minor currently under HRS 712-1209.1, a form of sex trafficking under uh, HRS 712-1203. Um, the way it's currently in the bill, I, I don't think it accomplishes what um, the bill meant to do. So we just changed the language and made it, made it track the 712-1209. Um, second, the department also suggests removing section four of the bill, which makes the new subsection for sex trafficking a triggering offense for habitual commercial sexual exploitation under 712-1209.5, as the new sex trafficking um, section is already a class A felony. So if the committee nevertheless wishes to add the new sex trafficking section to habitual commercial sexual exploitation, we provide language that would clarify and accomplish that intent, I think in a couple of different ways. And lastly, the department provides clarifying language as to the applicability of the state of mind to the attendant circumstance of the age of the child victim of sex trafficking under the new sex in, uh, subsection. So I'll, I'll be available for questions. Great, thank you. Uh, next up, we have Maui Prosecutor's Office in support. Um, 
Michael Galoyo Jr., Chair and SSC Representative for the Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii, on Zoom, perhaps? They're unavailable on Zoom, Chair. In support, Judith Clark, Executive Director for Hawaii Youth Services Network. Good morning. Aloha, Chair, members of the committee. I'm Judith Clark, Executive Director of Hawaii Youth Services Network, and we support this bill. Homeless youth who are living on their own on the streets have few options for meeting their basic survival needs. They often trade sex for food, money, or a place to sleep. They are vulnerable to being recruited into prostitution and other forms of commercial sex work by adults. I'd like to share the story of one of these victims or survivors as I prefer to call them. When Miley, her name changed to protect her privacy, was 13, she ran away from home. She told me, I met an older man. He was like an uncle to me. He put me up in a hotel room and I thought I was safe. But then I found out the true meaning of nothing in life is free. Minors who engage in sex work do it out of desperation or because they were deceived by somebody they trusted. They are victims, not criminals, and the people who recruit and exploit them are truly engaged in sex trafficking. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Thanks very much. That's everyone who signed up to testify in person or on Zoom on SB 2757. Is, it, is anyone all twisted to testify on SB 2757? Okay. Uh, there were 46 total in support, nobody in opposition, and one comment. Uh, members questions okay we'll go ahead and move on to the next bill which is sb 2758 uh, this authorizes civil claims to be made against a business owner or operator of a transit accommodation or other commercial entity that profits from sexual exploitation first up on 2758 is justin justine Hura for the attorney oh, good morning Good morning, uh, Chair and Honorable Committee members. My name is Justine Hira. I'm the Deputy Attorney General over at the Department of the Attorney General. We have some comments for you folks, um, if, and thank you very much for the opportunity to provide those comments. Um, we, uh, act, we submitted some language uh, to the draft and proposed that uh, clarifications be made to um, the definition of, of business, just so that it's a little bit clearer. Um, and so we provided that clarification. Um, in addition, um, we provided some clarification to the language of neglecting notification, and we submitted that perhaps disregarding notification would be much clearer. Um, in addition, um, we do submit a comment that um, regarding opening the statute of limitations such that there is no statute of limitations does create issues for trying such cases in civil um, that could create due process issues or evidentiary issues for future litigants. I'm available for further questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I believe that's everybody who signed up. That's everybody on SB 2758 that signed up to testify in person or on Zoom. Does anyone else wish to testify on SB 2758? Seeing none, members, questions? I don't think I have any either. Um, so I think at this point we will go ahead and vote. Um, can you take votes for us? Senator Alfonso? Okay. We have the. Uh... I need a black handle. Thank you, Christine. Okay, so I guess we'll go back to uh, the first one of, of, from the joint hearing between Human Services and um, Human Services and Housing. What is your committee's name? Health, Health and, and Human, human services. services. There, I got it. Okay, um, SB 3335. Um, we've all heard the recommendation already, so I, I don't know. Do you want to repeat it? I, I don't have the notes. 
I, I can repeat it. Why don't you go ahead and repeat it? That's probably best for transparency's sake. Okay. Um, Chair's recommendation was to pass with amendments regarding the AG's proposed amendments. We add a section to the Cannabis Board section, um, subsection I, as to the first meeting where quorum is met, the board shall solicit nominees from its members for chair and vice chair, and thereafter, by majority vote, the chair and vice chair of the board shall be selected. In the event of a tie, the governor shall be the tiebreaker. Shall be the tiebreaker vote. Accept the AG's amendment in the section for expungement regarding removing the word distribution. We're also going to accept the AG's proposed amendment regarding reinstating the positions in the original SB 3335. We're also going to accept DOTAX's proposed amendments at a defect date to promote further discussion, especially to assure hemp farmers concerning the existing hemp products will continue to have the same regulation and taxation as it exists now. Any yeah. com oh, Effect effective, was it a defective date too? Yes, a defective date of December 31, 2015. And we're adopting the, the proposed SD. SD1 with these amendments. With these amendments. Okay. Questions or concern members? Senator uh, Elefante. Yeah. Um, thank you, co-chairs. I appreciate the authors for um, introducing this and having a discussion on this. However, um, I still have serious concerns with the measure. Um, we did hear from numerous testifiers, especially from law enforcement, uh, Drug Fee Hawaii's testimony on the impacts and social costs, and also from the superintendent on their comments and concerns. Um, so for those reasons and the social impacts on that, unfortunately, I won't be able to support it here today, so I'll be voting no. Understood. Other questions or concerns? Seeing none, uh, Senator Elefante uh, as acting vice chair. Thank you. Okay, chair's recommendations to pass SB 3335 with amendments. Uh, chair Rhodes. Aye. Vice Chair Gabbard is excused. Uh, I vote no. Senator San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Owa. Aye. Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to the 10 o'clock agenda. First up on the 10 o'clock agenda was HB 159 relating to liquor licenses, exempts the notarization requirement for renewals of liquor licenses. Uh, recommendation on this one is to pass unamended. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Elefante. Okay, Chair's recommendations to pass SB 159, HD 1, SD 1, as is. Of the four members present on judiciary, any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2683. This protects individuals who make claims of sexual misconduct from, def um, from defamation lawsuits unless the claims are proven to be made with malice. Our recommendation here is to pass with amendments, except the Civil Rights Commission's amendments to reword the bill's first provision for better consistency. It will now say that the defendant shall not need to pay money damages rather than saying that the defendant is immune from a lawsuit. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Elefante. Okay, Chair's recommendations to pass SB 2683 with amendments of the four members present on judiciary, noting the uh, absence of Vice Chair Gabbard. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2702. This specifies that the practice of election fraud intimidation includes carrying any firearm or weapon or photographing the face of any voter without permission from both the voter and an appropriate election official. Um, there's still some unanswered questions here, so I'm going to defer this until February 27, which is a Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Defer till February 27, Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Uh, next up is SB 2706 relating to expungement of criminal records, expands eligibility for and automates the expungements of conviction records if certain criteria are met. Um, this is a work in progress. I'm going to defer this one until Tuesday, February 27th at 9.30 a.m. as well. Okay, next up is SB 2522 relating to expungement. It allows persons convicted of certain criminal violations to apply to the court for an expungement order under certain circumstances. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with some amendments. Like to, in part three of the bill regarding the expungements of convictions of first time property offenders, accept the AG's recommendation to amend the first time property offender statute instead of amending the session law that established the statute. There'll be some text for clarity and consistency, and in the preamble, will amend it to indicate that it applies to those under 21, not just minors. Okay. Questions or concerns? 
If not, uh, Senator Alfonte. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2522 with amendments of the four members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? No. No vote for Senator Wa. Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2757, align state sex trafficking laws with federal law by making the commercial sexual exploitation of a minor a form of sex trafficking. Um, let's see. Our recommendation is to pass with amendments. We'll clarify that under that under all the newly added possible criteria of sex trafficking, the offense requires the offender to be older than 18, which is what it was before. Include the current exemption for law enforcement officers that has been in existence for quite some time. And we'll delete section four as unnecessary per the attorney general's testimony regarding habitual commercial sexual exploitation offenders. Specify that the age of the minor is a strict liability element, i.e. it doesn't matter whether you know or should, should have known. It's just strict liability. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Alafonte. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to pass SB 2757 with amendments of the four members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 2758. This authorizes civil claims to be made against a business owner or operator of a transient accommodation or other commercial entity that profits from sexual exploitation. Uh, the recommendation here is to pass with some amendments to clarify that there will now be a cause of action against a person, a business, an owner of a business or an operator of a business which engages engages in traffic trafficking behavior. Uh, replace the word neglecting with, with the word disregarding to avoid implying that a standard of care exists. And we'll remove redundant language relating to punitive damages also, but we will leave in the language eliminating the statute of limitations. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Alfonte. Okay, charge recommendations to pass SB 2758 with amendments of the four members present. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Mr. Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you very much. That concludes our business. Thank you all for being here.